G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy and a very wet uh, southern part of Western Australia. This is the uh, Pemberton uh, region of the Great Southern in Western Australia and it's known for wineries and a hardwood forest logging country. Before I start, I want to acknowledge the Bibberman Wadandi people uh, who are the traditional custodians of the lands around here uh, from the greater Noongar Nation. Now in this video, I'm going to compare two iconic service boots, the uh, Weiberg Stitch Down service boot and the White's MP service boot. So the premise of this video is a comparison. It's not really a battle. It's a comparison between uh, these two iconic service boots. On my left is the Weiberg Stitch Down service boot uh, from Canadian boot making company Weiberg. Uh, on my right is the White's MP service boot. This one is, uh, this version is called the Sherman. Uh, both are iconic in the sense that they go after the um, you know, quite clearly sort of World War II vibe in terms of service boots at the military war. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, uh, soon. Um, they, they come from intergenerational companies. Whites, for example, started in the 1880s, I believe, uh, during the US Civil War, and uh, eventually moved from sort of the eastern states uh, in the US across to the Pacific Northwest. And their history across the years has been to make uh, logging boots and other kinds of forestry work boots as well as um, uh, uh, firefighter boots for those who uh, parachute into wildfires uh, in the Pacific Northwest and, and other areas. Uh, Weiberg have a similar history. Um, I don't think they're quite as old. They're, I think, in the uh, fourth generation uh, of ownership. Uh, and uh, they also come from a history of making work boots and uh, firefighter boots. Uh, uh, from uh, the 20s and 30s and so on. Um, how have they evolved and how do they compare as service boots and boot makers? Um, let's take a look uh, at that by looking at uh, each boot at a, in turn. So I'll start with the Weiberg service boot. Now you can say this is the granddaddy of the recent service boot trends the Americana heritage service boot trend that started in the uh, 2000s and then really caught on in the 2010s when people like Thursday Boots came on with the uh, uh, Captain Boot uh, and then you know, quickly followed by Grant Stone and their service boots, uh, Parkhurst and their Allen and Richmond service boots, um, even uh, people like uh, Allen Edmonds uh, rebirthed their Higgin Mill service boots, uh, Wolverine Thousand Mile uh, boots got rebirthed in, in this trend that was started by the service boot Americana Frenzy. And I think you can quite rightly give that credit to Brett Weiberg, uh, who in uh, the late 2000s, I think around 2008, he saw the way uh, the Japanese market was going with Red Wing Heritage boots. And he revived an old Weiberg design from the 1940s when they made Canadian Army boots and he created this uh, Weiberg stitch down service boot. Um, so much so that a stitch down service boot has been trademarked by Weiberg. Uh, and you can see that this is a fairly iconic service boot, six inch or slightly less than six inch in height. Uh, it has a toe cap, although they also come in uh, plain toe models. Uh, reasonably uh, generous quarters a vamp piece and a single piece backstay, very boondocker style, very World War II style. Uh, block heel, uh, fairly substantial uh, midsole and a really nice grippy outsole, although they do come in, in different outsole versions from Weiberg. Now, as I said, Weiberg started as a work boot company and when uh, Brett Weiberg revived this uh, design, they obviously decided to turn toward more casual boots. And you can look at this construction and just admire all sorts of things from this construction. Firstly, the clicking, which is the choice of leather selection in all Viber boots is just incredible. You don't see a bad piece of leather anywhere. You don't see any kind of uh, grain losing itself 
um, other than the normal sort of creasing you see in, 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 in wear. Um, from the clicking through to the uh, stitching is just refined. I mean, the actual precision of that stitching on the quarters, uh, on the uh, backstay, uh, on the uh, toe box is just precise, uh, elegant, and absolutely even. The double stitch down on the uh, uh, 270 degree stitch down, uh, and I'll talk about stitch down in a minute because they're both stitch down boots. It's just so precise. The double stitching, one of which goes through the flared out uppers and the midsole, and the other that goes through all the way into the outsole, they just sit alongside each other in perfect parallel lines. The stitch per inch density is perfect. Weiberg have obviously decided to make a tough um, uh, service boot, capable of being worn in the military in the trenches, but with a really refined way of doing it. So, if you take a look at the somewhat less refined, but extremely tough service boot from White's called their MP Sherman. Yeah, you do see that they're not put together as carefully as the Weiberg, but they're put together tough. This is a work boot maker who said, hey, let's make a service boot, but we'll just make it like a normal work boot. We're not going to be too precise about our stitching. Then, you know, it's not perfectly even. In some of my other White's MPs, uh, the stitch per inch density is something like you know, four per, per, per inch, really big, wide, hand-sewn stitching though. Um, and this is also a stitch down. I said I'd talk about stitch down. Unlike Goodyear Welton, where the uppers are turned in and the inside of the uppers are sewn to the insole and then the outside through the welt is sewn to the uh, uh, sole construction through the welt, stitch down construction flares the uppers out and then stitches them directly to the midsole. So in both cases, in this case you get a double stitch down uh, directly to the midsole. In this case you get a single stitch down rolled welt. And I'll tell you about the rolled welt. I think whites are the only people who do this. Um, the rolled welt is where they flare the uppers out as an, in a normal stitch down. But what they then do is they get another piece of the same leather as the uppers, in this case Horween's uh, Chrome XL. Um, they stitch that to the uppers and then roll it out and then stitch that down. And that's why you get this bubble gummy kind of uh, welt, storm welty kind of look around there. And that's why when you look at the sides, you actually see two layers of uppers leather and then the midsole. Um, super tough construction, as I've said, uh, a little less elegant, but the ideal service boot. I mean, I think if you looked at that, you'd say, oh, okay, I can see where Thursday captains come from. You can say, um, all right. I'm pretty sure that's where um, the genesis of the Parkhurst Richmond boot comes from. And if you look at any other service boot with a cap toe, you go, hmm, okay, I think that's where that came from. Um, quite obviously, uh, a military style uh, boot made by a good, tough uh, uh, work boot maker. In terms of uh, comfort and sizing, uh, Weiberg uses the UK sizing model. So go and have a look at my uh, Weiberg review to check out what sizing uh, is in the Weiberg boot compared to your US uh, uh, sizing because they do use UK size numbers. Um, in terms of sizing for uh, the Sherman, this is a, the MP last, which is a modified Barry last, and it, it is a slightly strange last. It's actually longer than the size says it is, but it has a sort of cigar-shaped um, kind of last. So extremely comfortable, but when you first put it on, you think, hmm, I have long feet. <laughs> but it's not that you buy them too long. You have the right, you know, requisite sort of thumbs width along the front. Uh, in terms of comfort, the arch support on these are amazing. They have a leather shank, uh, the entire sort of arch area is built up with layers of leather to sort of build it up into your arch. It's tucked in here so you kind of cantilever this, this bit of leather which pulls, it, pulls your arch up to give you fantastic support. Uh, the Weiberg, as solidly built, is perhaps not as comfortable under the arch. Um, it doesn't have that 
that push up of layers of leather uh, pushing you up, although it does have this sort of similar cantilever type of uh, approach to it. The leather's used, in this case is Horween's uh, natural chrome excel. When it first comes, it's a, it's a very light honey brown, and it's now obviously become uh, quite a dark brown through just the oils on my hands, through one conditioning with Venetian shoe cream, and through, would you believe it or not, uh, sun tanning. Because if you walk around in the sun, these actually get darker. This is from C.F. Stead in England. Uh, Charles F. Stead produced this culata leather. Uh, it is a bovine leather, not horse. Culata is the, the uh, piece of the animal where it comes from, not the animal itself. And it's from the hind quarters. Very tough leather compared to this soft, sort of moldable leather. It's qu uh, quite a tough, uh, very, very sturdy feeling leather when you put it on. Uh, in terms of comfort, I, I, I'm not sure I can, I can uh, separate the two. I would perhaps maybe uh, pull out the MP boots being slightly ahead uh, because of that arch support factor. So in summary, um, not so much a battle of the service boots, but a comparison of these two iconic models. Uh, two of my favorite boots, I think. Uh, this is obviously my grail boot. If you followed my videos, you know. And this is really, uh, it's, if it's not a grail boot, it's something that you desire and once you uh, start collecting boots. Um, so that's it. I hope you like this slightly quirky video. And if you do, click on like, it'll really help me out. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget to click on the subscribe button because uh, YouTube will then bring more of these videos across to you about boot comparisons, boot reviews, and so on. Uh, and I have a lot more to come. So click on subscribe. And uh, take care, and I'll see you in my next video.